good evening and welcome back one and all for a conversation series on building productivity mindset good evening sagar good evening kalpesh how are you very very good and looking forward for another wonderful session on building productivity mindset awesome great so sagar as as we keep doing this is the ninth episode that we are on uh, you know time flies it's absolutely you know ninth week already and we are discussing and we have spoken about so many good things uh, oh anil goswami is already online thank you anil sir for for being with us really appreciate so sagar you know let's let's begin with doing a small recap of mistake proofing which is the poka yoke that we did last time and i think uh, you know let's begin with with having a quick brief on that absolutely so just a, just a short summary kalpesh we all talked about poka yoke and i always said that if you want to remember about poka yoke just keep pumping the heart because the four walls in the heart are basically nature's poka yoke given to all of us so of course we can all implement poka yoke mystic proofing in our industries to do that there are six principles that i talked about in poka yoke principle number 1 is elimination that's the best methodology to ensure mistake which means you eliminate the process step which is causing errors the second point is prevention if you cannot eliminate it prevent it prevented by putting some kind of uh, you know horns some kind of no go go gauges some kind of uh, alarms which help you to prevent those errors third is replacement if there is a possibility of replacing that process step or removing that process step and thereby you can get a mistake proofing process why not example copier now people earlier used to put that carbon paper or write and rewrite the pages a copier is a very simple example of replacement of that manual thing by making an automation approach the same way yeah. the next step is facilitation remember i gave you an example about the wiring red green and the neutral one uh, sorry red black and the neutral one now if the wiring color codes were not given to us we would have made mistakes so that is about facilitating to ensure the mistakes are not happened then is detection let's say you cannot eliminate it you cannot prevent it you cannot replace it you cannot even facilitate that error the only way is to do is detection for example if you go into the food industry they have detection sensors for the quality of the food maybe potato oranges tomatoes and they segregate those things because producing potatoes and tomatoes is in the control of nature but what is in our control detection nothing happens have mitigation now in corona we neither could eliminate prevent replace facilitate or even detect, uh, detect of course detection is there but afterwards after the corona is happened so what you do you have mitigation all our frontline workers are wearing a ppe kit we drive a car we have the airbags now that are all mitigation techniques for poka yoke now we talked about these principles but we also touched base on the benefits the benefits of poka yoke are very very evident it improves operator attitude it improves productivity it improves customer satisfaction it improves branding and it also ensures lower cost for the quality produced because you are going to produce it first time right you are going to produce it mistake proofing your efficiency is improved so that's about the poka yoke and that's about a recap that we have done on episode 8 of mistake proofing wonderful and you know sagar very well said because uh, you know one of the things that i have learned in life is that when you have to keep thinking and working both of that simultaneously the probability of mistakes occurring are very high yeah now by doing these simple steps of what you spoke about the prevention detection you know mitigation example of the wiring which is color coded i don't have to think you know i know that a blue match is blue a yellow match is yellow and a white match is white i just put them in and it has it has become so simple that anybody today can fix those things you know 
Yes. So whether you you're an engineer or you're not an engineer or you understand the the whole wiring philosophy or not, but you're able to do that. So you, when your thinking and your action have been differentiated, the profit the efficiency moves to a completely different level, and the other you know which results into your effectiveness being very strong. Absolutely. So I think wonderful uh, session there. So let's let's uh, you know come to the topic for today. Then in that case, you know where we have mentioned that we're going to talk about data intelligence. But I think there is there is something that uh, there there is a story which I know you wanted to share with us. So may I invite you to share that story? Absolutely, Kalpesh. So I mean stories are everywhere. I mean we have all born with stories, and we all love stories. The same way we are all surrounded by data. now right now the data that we have is you know anil goswami has commented three times nar mr narayan murthy has commented once and i have replied once and you have commented once that's one part of data second is we have got four users on linkedin we have got seven users on youtube and so on and so forth now these are all data points so we are surrounded by data be it social media be it our website be it our google analytics that we all use or be it the mobile battery indication that we have as a data point so let me share a story of an industry using this data intelligently for business decisions so there was a company of gold mining and uh, you know they were analyzing the data which they were receiving the first data that they were receiving is the levels of oxygen in the mine because they have to continuously monitor the oxygen level in the mine to ensure the safety of the workers the second thing that they were monitoring was the temperature throughout the day the third thing that they were monitoring is the productivity output which means the quantity and the quality of output right and the last they were observing was the machines and their heat dissipated in the mine while they were being used now all these data points were all in separate separate pockets as as an individual while you are seeing the data points you would say yes the oxygen levels are good at this point and the oxygen levels are bad at that point the productivity is good at this point and the productivity is good at that point and so on and so forth which means at every different levels of time interval you have certain data points now what happens when you take that data points and create a story and i would say a sentence which makes sense to all of us that at morning 8 o'clock to noon 12 o'clock the oxygen levels in the mines are the highest the efficiency and the productivity of the workers are the highest and the heat dissipated by the machines remains the same throughout the day but their impact in the morning is lower because of the heat outside the environment now if i make this story or if i give this story as a sentence what happens is the business leaders of those mining industry tweaked a little bit of the time they started mining from 4 am in the morning till 12 o'clock in the noon having a break in the afternoon session and again doing mining in the evening times surprisingly kalpesh you would be shocked to know they had a profitability of 15 million us dollars without any additional capital investment which which was only by having 3.7% more yield just by changing the times beautiful now that is the story and that is the power of having data putting into into information driving the intelligence using that and taking business decisions so today's topic is about data intelligence and if you are a professional if you are a student if you are a owner of an industry or if you are a leader manager or an employee of an industry this session is for you if you are surrounded by data this session is for you and if you are linked with any data points in your life this session is for you so share the link with all your friends bring them on board because next 40 minutes we are going to take you through the journey of data 
to data intelligence. Beautiful. I think that's uh, that's very well said, Sagar. So the the data that you have, you use it with intelligence to make the right decisions. I think it can create tremendous results, and I think that's that's how the industry is going forward. Uh, yeah. I remember, you know, much before the whole noise about data intelligence and analytics and insights started. Uh, N Chandra, who is the current chairman of Tata Group. Uh, way back, I think in 2007 or 2008, has mentioned this that data is the new currency, and and it's so true today and evident with regards to all that is happening around us. You know where even you and I do not know of how our datas are being captured right now at this moment of time without we doing anything. that's how we are actually connected and and that intelligence actually drives the entire uh, you know algorithms and mechanisms so so it will be good to talk more so let me ask you the next question sagar what is data how is data different from information and intelligence okay, okay. great question kalpesh so if i may ask all the listeners to just type in one data point for me what is the current status of your battery just punch in your answers please what is the current status of your battery is it at 50% 60% 70% 13% and if it's mine lower is, than that please put it to charge mine is at 54% brilliant type your answers put it in tejaswini what's your battery status mansi um narayan sir anil goswami Anil ji saying please don't use the jargons in the next technical session sure sir point take we will do that but sorry some some things are jargons where you know we we can't go out of it okay so we have faizan 85% shruti saying 20% great so this kalpesh is data so yeah. data basically is a raw fact and figure that helps you to drive a very limited meaning and that limited meaning is about the percentage of battery for example let's say we have a friend who talks about 77% battery and then we have one friend mohit who talks about 16% battery now this data point are just indication of what their battery status is now what mohit has to do looking at the capacity of his battery 16% what he will say oh i need to attend the session for 40 minutes and he will run his information okay so 16% battery means it will run for like 30 minutes the session is for 40 minutes he'll convert that information into intelligence using his analytics right now in the brain and he will go to the charger plug it in so the okay. data point is percentage of battery information is what i have to do which means the data is a raw fact and figure which gives you quantity information observation fact numbers the information basically is the point or combination of data for your everyday question the question here is will i be able to attend the complete session at 16% battery if your answer is no you ensure you take a step up what you do plug it in and intelligence is basically combination of data into an information combination of that information into a visual board for you to take business decisions now in this scenario where we talked about the battery percentage the business decision is i wish to attend the session i need more battery what do i do plug it into a power so a very simple example with the live audience and thank you very much for sharing your battery percentages that was a data point for me and i showed you a live example how data can be used what information do we have and how it can be used intelligently so mohit i'm sure you have put your mobile to charging now <laughs> <laughs> i think no that's true i think uh, you know there's so many data points around us the yeah. the whole question is about how do we convert that into intelligence and and what is that what is that you know it's like the stimuli and the response so every data point is a stimuli but how do we respond to that and do we have Absolutely. that intelligence or does it give that intelligence to us 
to actually convert that into an action item. So, so most so of the time, it, Kalpesh, uh, data itself gives you that hints. But as human being, because our mind is occupied with preconceived thoughts, our mind is occupied with stress. We are not able to intelligently evaluate that data. And that is important. And that is where today we are going to talk about data intelligence. That means your personal awareness. And when it comes to data intelligence in business, it talks about business intelligence tools, data visualization tools, dashboards. I'm sure everyone here would love to know what kind of dashboards they can use. So hang on and we will get back to that point. Yes, Kalpesh, over to you. No, wonderful, Sagar. So I think that, that at least uh, gives a clear perspective on the data, the information and the intelligence. Now, you know, it's a very raw question, but I think it sometimes uh, is still not very clear. How do you differentiate or what are the different types of data? Uh, you know that 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 all of us deal with brilliant question and kalpesh always always remember or you know i would always say that the solutions have to be simple you need not have complex solution the winner is always the one who will provide the simplest solutions so even though this is a very basic question it's a very, very important question. So thank you for asking. And uh, for listeners to know, uh, by the way, me and Kalpesh don't discuss these questions beforehand. And these are just random questions based on your comments. So please type your comments and throw more questions to us. Kalpesh is picking up those questions based on his experience, based on my answers and based on your comments. So your comments is our data. Don't forget to put in your comments. So now, Kalpesh, coming to your question, let's yeah. talk about this bottle as a product. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? What is the color of the bottle? Green, yellow. OK, yellow. Yeah, that's OK. Yellow, green, anything. Uh, yeah. What is the shape of the what is the shape of the bottle? Uh, so it's round, if I see from the bottom. Uh, in and it has a, has a particular grip and that's why it's it's shaped in a in a particular format cylindrical and cylindrical yeah okay now let me ask you one more specific question what is the weight of the bottle if it contains one kg of water yeah about maybe 1.5 1.050 grams or something like considering the no, bottle no, weight now, the answer that you gave me was based on your data intelligence in your mind. I gave you one kg of water, right? You said 200 grams of bottle, so 1.2. So that was data intelligence based on the data that I gave you. Now, talking about type of data or type of data, the first thing that you told me is the color of the bottle, which is a descriptive data, which is nothing but quantitative. It's a cylindrical body. It's a yellow color and so on and so forth. Yeah. Coming on to the numericals that you gave me, I gave you that it contains one liter of water or one kg of water because density of water is one. So that becomes numerical. Now, if I if I tell you that it has got a cap and it has got a hole and a diameter of, mm -hmm. let's say, five centimeter. Now, all this becomes numerical data. How many of us have a laptop or a phone right now? Of course, all of us, right? OK, so what we do is we go by the specification. Now, what is that specification, Kalpesh? The specifications is nothing but your data point. So what they tell you about the phone or the mobile phone, like this one. Let's say I've got a OnePlus or I've got the earbuds. OK, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. when I talk about the type of data for this earbuds is the quantitative will be it is black in color. The box is of black color and it's uh, magnetic, right? Now, if I talk about the numerical data, it has got two ear pods. Each ear pod is of 50 uh, MHA battery. The battery backup is 220 MHA and it has got an LED at the back and the charger, a USB cable, two points. Now, this type of data 
comes under discrete and continuous. The discrete is nothing but the numbers and continuous is if I say that the battery of this right now at this point is 50 percent, it becomes continuous because the minute I charge it, it will increase. So basically what we are talking about is different types of data and we have one more example by our own Anil ji. Uh, rainfall data says past 10 years and given the pattern, it helps us to decide the capacity that is exactly using the data of rainfall, using the intelligence of previous uh, years, the consumption pattern and applying it to the current scenario, which is a brilliant example. So the type of data that you asked me, there are two types of data, quantitative, qualitative. Quantitative is more of descriptive. Quali uh, qualitative is more of discrete and continuous. Discrete means numbers. Continuous means numbers, but that can change. Perfect. Perfect. I think that's uh, that's very well explained, Sagar. You know, um, while while it's so much real on on what you just mentioned with regards to the discrete uh, and and the the quantification part of it, then the qualitative data, I think. Uh, what what I would want people to know, all our listeners to know, is that you know all of these data points are crucial, and each one of them, in its own way, is very critical for making any business decisions. So we will we will of course dwell into that as as we talk forward and stay tuned for it. But let me now move to the next point, Sagar, and that is uh, you know there is there is so much of that data. <laughs> okay, as we rightly just said, that just with the air, you know, air dopes that you have, or or with the bottle, we spoke about so many different data points. How do you, you know, how do you, how do you make out what is quality, what is not? How do you define data quality? Brilliant. So data quality completely depends on what is your purpose. So whenever we talk about data quality, we need to first decide why do we need that data for? For example, if I have to talk about this key and if I tell you a data about this key that this key has got this ring or this holder, it is totally irrelevant for you at that point of time because you are interested to know what are the features of this key? You as a buyer are interested to know how many days the battery in this key will last. You are interested to know how do I operate this key or how do I open this key? So most of the time in industry, what happens is uh, we get onto a project and we say we have to collect the data. Let's say it can be a Six Sigma project. It can be a continuous improvement project. It can be a Kaizen project. Because we have heard that we have to collect data. We start collecting data for anything and everything that can be measured. And that is where we dilute the quality of data. So the most important thing which everyone needs to know is the GIGO concept. Now, what is GIGO? It's not a game or it's not a, the cartoon or the characters that we know of the GIGO thing. It's basically garbage in, garbage out, mm -hmm. which means if the quality of your data is not good, let me pull out an image for you, Kalpish. That will be for, for all the listeners as well. So this is an image which I got from uh, the website which talks about data quality. As you see here, Kalpesh, the data quality becomes so relevant and so important that if your data quality is not good, the information that you will derive from that data will be compromised, will be of a super, uh, inferior quality. If the information that you have is of an inferior quality, the decision that you're going to make will not be 100% correct. Now, if the decision that you make is not 100% correct, your business outcomes will always be a little bit compromised or your business outcomes will not be as per the desired outcome. So having said that, data quality is fairly important and you can always control data quality 
by using certain practices. So when we say about data quality, let's say uh, a, a entrepreneur, right? He has a marketing team who uses MailChimp. I'm giving a very simple example as an individual. Now MailChimp charges you per mail sent. Now imagine just because you have a wrong name or you have entered a name twice in the subscription list, you are sending the same email to the same person repeatedly just by you know change of names or something else how annoyed will that customer be the same way you have your financial statements you have collected all the data for your financial statements and when you are trying to put up that data uh, you really don't know uh, you know that you need what do you need for debits what do you need for credits and let's say you've got 10 people giving you 10 expense statement and you put all that into one and then you're presenting it to your manager. The minute your manager asks you, hey, can you tell me what is the expenditure of employee A versus employee C? You're totally at loss because the data that you have received, you have actually pulled in, dumped it into one and made it into a one subheading. So this is where data quality plays a very important role. The same way there would be a data quality which also talks about in the industrial level, let's say about the pressure and the time of the machine. Now in this, the person would take the time of the machine and also note the pressure of the die which is going to uh, press this component. Now the time of the machine cannot be altered, which means that every punch is going to happen at 10 seconds invariably of what the situation is. That is a setting in the machine. But the person who is collecting the data collects the data for the time taken for the punching. Is it relevant? Absolutely not because the time is not changing. Yeah. I'm saying that the time is constant. Yes. In the machine or in the scenario where time was changing and pressure was changing at every cycle, collecting that data is important. But when we know that one point is constant and it is not changing, you need not invest your energy in getting that data. Yeah. So data quality talks about who should take the data, what data should be captured, how it should be captured and when it should be captured. So let me give you an example of the last point, which is when. Let's say you're running a batch of 24 hours. Each batch is for six hours. Will you take a data of every 10 minutes or will you take a data of every six hours or will you take a data of every three hours? Now that's the question you have to ask and based on the process knowledge, based on the subject knowledge, based on let's say if it's a reactive uh, process or if it's just a transfer process and you just have to note whether the tank is empty or not. It does not make sense for me to go and check it every 10 minutes. What I have to do is I will check it at zero. Then I will check it at 30 minutes to just check if the flow is going on or not. And then yeah. I will check it at five hours and then I will check it at the sixth hour if it's empty or not. Now, if the person is collecting the data of every 10 minutes, that quality of data is not required. It's, it's extensive data. It's too much of data. So now my question to all the listeners is, have you come across a point in life where you have got too much of data, which sometimes you feel overwhelming or sometimes you feel that it's, it's just going over the board. Can you give me one example of bad data quality or over engineered data? Kalpesh, you may also give it a go if you want. Um. So not something that comes up very quickly to my mind Sagar right now, but but one thing which I know is, for example, uh, you know, today on uh, on the Google, for example, or Google Maps, if I talk about, it captures every single data point of where I have been to which location I have been or how much time have I spent or, or if I talk about a Google Fit. Now both these apps are there on my phone and they keep capturing those data points. Today, for me, 
as an individual probably that data is of no relevant because you know i don't want that data point or use that data point but i'm sure that if i think of it from google's perspective or from their apps perspective maybe that is very relevant with regards to uh, they capturing my movement or they understanding my pattern of traveling and hence that becomes important from their perspective i think narendra has so, put up a very good point about junk mails yes absolutely kalpesh so that that is basically intelligence or uh, you need the algorithm which your email box has developed over a time so every time narendra is highlighting some mail as junk or deleting some mail as junk the the inbox is actually getting more and more intelligent and that is building the data quality for narendra very good example sir amazing example of junk mail we always uh, the inbox is spammed nowadays with junk mailers and you know other things uh due to wrong or bogus data collected for tube wells water tables after many years it was realized that water table went down and medicine and medicine then thought of water charging artificially now made mandatory i think anil ji has also got one point but i'm not so clear so i won't dwell into that kalpesh but i i understand what he's trying to say is that uh, you know too much data of tube well was collected and uh, you know after many years it was realized that it's not but it could also be because you know people are not going to move in that location so what he's trying to say or what i can uh, infer through that is that there's there's a random place where nobody is going to stay for like next 5 years and they've got a water table data of it which is not relevant for the people but it could be relevant for the government it could be relevant for nt so quality of data completely depends on the information required by the user it is completely relevant to the user something can be not relevant to kalpesh but the same thing can be relevant to anil ji so data quality depends completely on what is the information you are seeking i hope that answers the question kalpesh no that that does answer uh, sagar and i think that's that's a beautiful because it's always contextual the data that you're talking about or the data quality will always be contextual in regards to what uh, what are you seeking yes there is a there is a beautiful word sagar which i have always heard in terms of data which is the gigo so yeah the gig of that <laughs> so the gig of would you want to just you know tell us a little more about the gig of yeah so that's what i i uh, started with remember so when i said data quality also depends on the gigo concept which is garbage in and garbage out so if the data that is fed in the system for example i'll take the simplest example which every single one of us right now on the call will be able to understand you have taken a dump from a software your sap or your tele and the dates are presented in slash or in dot separator format what happens when you are trying to filter that data according to the month or the year or the date you will always have an error because yeah. some data will be in slash some data will be in the dot so what happens is you have put in garbage inside what you are getting is garbage outside when i say garbage it's not the wrong data but it's the incomplete data which makes you again go back do the churning and take out the data so this is where when you want to really work on the data quality or the quality of the data you need to understand what is the source of your data you have to have the right consolidation of your data you need to ensure that the data processing is done in the right way and if the data processing is done in the correct way you will be able to derive information from that data so that is a concept of gigo garbage in garbage out don't expect your business intelligence your tools to function properly if you don't give it the right information for a simplest example this is the year pod and i have been told that there is a blinker on this side which blinks four times which means it's 100% capacity if it blinks three times 75% capacity if it blinks two times 50% and if it blinks one time is only 
25%. Now, if this data goes wrong, let's say this is 25% charged, but if the output that it shows me, the data it shows me is four time blinks, I will understand it is 100%. What will be the output? I will use them while I'm on the call and the call will be disconnected in midst and I will have a problem. Yeah. And that is exactly what we say about garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> well said. No, I think Sagar, that relates to a lot of uh, organizations as well. You know, today, uh, historically, we've seen that if there are 100 startups which begin their work on a certain amount of market research data and intelligence that they've created, historically, more than, you know, 50 to 60 percent of those startups fail. <coughs> and a lot of times, what comes out is that the business intelligence or the assumptions on which they had made their entire plan was not substantial enough for their whole business to survive. So yeah. I think that data quality that you mentioned uh, plays a very significant role. So now moving to you know the next point. So where you you know we, at the earlier stage of the conversation we differentiated what is data information intelligence, and now we've you know, kind of started synergizing and understanding that part. But if we have to go a little deep into understanding what is data intelligence, then what would be your comments on that? So uh, first of all, I'll give you a theoretical uh, statement, Kalpesh, because uh, I have to use this statement as it is because it, it has a lot of relevance and data intelligence. When you're talking about data intelligence, I better use the verbatim which is mentioned as data intelligence rather than using my own intelligence. So data intelligence is the analysis of various forms of data in such way that it can be used by companies to expand their services, improve their customer delight and take strategic decisions to make right investments. Coming on to data intelligence, it also refers to use of internal data, external data. The source of data culpage can be varied. Now, for example, the source of the data can be survey, the subscription mailers, the online tracking using the Google Pixel or the Google Analytics or the social media trend that is being generated for the company or the market surveys that the companies do. Like, uh, one brilliant example of data intelligence was BMW sent a survey to their clients to understand what is one feature that their clients would love to have in the BMW. And that was about automated wipers. And that's when it was implemented. The second survey, which we all know, and that is relevant to all of us. Have you seen an ad Kalpesh recently, which talks about the boot of the car? opening automatically just by waving a leg under the thing. Now yeah. that is also an, an example of data survey done by the OEM. I think it's Kia or Hyundai, which has gone that car, uh, which is that car or uh, Kia or Hyundai is what I remember. So they conducted a survey and you know, they found what is a discomfort to their customers in their car. Of course, they got various data points. In that, then they had to run the Pareto, which is the 80-20. And yeah. based on that, that feature was included in the car. Now, I know it because I was a part of that team. I was involved in that data point. And being into the automotive industry, that was very, very crucial. Beautiful. So that's, that's one simple example. So business performance is very, very related or business intelligence, business decisions should always be made based on data. Most of the times, I'm sorry to say, but this is a fact. Most of the time, what happens is the MSME and SME, even for appraisals, and that's that's a valid point, Kalpesh, pay attention and all the listeners, that MSMEs and SMEs most of the time do their appraisals based on their relationship with the employee and not based on their performance 
and that is one big blow to the employee motivation because what happens is the data shows that kumar has performed ex extensively well but sandeep has not done well but because sandeep has got a very good rapport with the managing director his appraisal is better than kumar now in this case if they had used the data the performance points the kpis the kras and put it into an intelligence tool as a dashboard or visualize that data the scenarios would have been different so that is the power of data intelligence and that is the use of data intelligence which means if right data intelligence is used you not only get support from your internal staff but you also get support from your external stakeholders and everybody will be happy if you use the right data intelligence beautifully said sagar and you know what with the examples that you're just sharing just on a lighter note something struck me i think we don't use data intelligence into our relationships <laughs> or or in in you know there's there's this fights or the there, there's those debates that happen uh, in in relationships of what did i do for you and what did you do for me or i did not get time a lot of those aspects and if you actually see they are all perception based uh you know beliefs and nothing which is backed up with a data or data intelligence so just on a lighter note i thought it is so relevant even when when you talk about your personal levels and and where this data can be relevant so coming to the next point sagar you know we we are 40 second minute right now and thanks for all of the audiences who have been with us through various channels so i see people from youtube from facebook and from linkedin and uh, and thank you for participating narendra thank you for uh, for being there with us arnab thank you for being there sagar the next question which i want to ask you is is to go take us through the journey of the components of data intelligence sure so before we go into the components of data intelligence uh, just taking forward the suggestion that you gave about you know using data intelligence in our relationship so Kalpesh has just used that data intelligence and thank everyone who participated in this session. So that's a live use of the data, the comments that people are typing, the names that are being visible on the screen and he has thanked it. So what he has done is he has used data, compiled it into an information, used his intelligence that if he's going to thank these people, it's going to build a good relationship with these people and also show gratitude. And he's done that. So a very simple way of using data information and applying it for your intelligence. Amazing, Kalpesh. I, I really give kudos to you for that. Now, to everyone who is listening, why don't you make one phone call to someone who has made a little difference in your life? Talk to them for three minutes as a part of data, we'll say, and just share with them what you feel about them. In specifics, you can talk about quantity, you can talk about qualitative data or quantitative feedback. You can tell them what difference they've made in your life. And let's bring that gratitude out of today's session. Of course, data intelligence is for business. But now that we've touched on the personal note, why don't you do that and let me know. That can also be applied in your organizations. So tomorrow morning, if you are a leader, why don't you put five post-it notes to your friends, to your colleagues and send them a mail about how awesome they have performed during this lockdown, how awesome they have contributed to the organization. And if your managing director or if your owner has stood by his words, no cuts on the salary, uh, no employee has been removed, send him a kudos card as well. He is a human being. He needs your support. He is all alone at the top. Send him a kudos card. And if you can do that, I would be really happy and I will have a real joy when I sleep today. So that's that's for the session. Now coming on to the question that Kalpesh asked me, which is about the components. components. Yes, sir. the components. Now, there are six components, basically, that uh, we talk about in data intelligence, five to be specific. It's about descriptive component. So. Sometimes we have to have the intelligence or the data intelligence worked in a descriptive manner, which means 
if we are trying to analyze a business performance if you are trying to examine the data using business performance it will not always be numerical but it will be more of a descriptive way of this unit has performed so and so during x months or during the past 6 months so it's more of numerical plus descriptive way of sharing the data intelligence so let me remind everyone data intelligence is not something which is very difficult it is as good as telling a story the story should have characters the story should have numbers and the story should have a conclusion and that's data intelligence so don't worry my friends if you if you don't know data intelligence if you find it as a jargon just go back to any story that you have heard the story starts with once there was a king he had two daughters i mean information data and that's intelligence so the first one is descriptive the second one is prescriptive which means if you if you have some data which is of the past you already collected a lot of data using that and you also have an alternative knowledge which means you have a knowledge bank that can happen because of that you can have a prescriptive intelligence which means based on the data it will analyze and it will give you a prescription that you need to do this this also can be known as predictive which means for machining so kalpesh in the maintenance department we use this tool we have a data about when this machine went for maintenance why this machine went for maintenance so let me give you one small example a very quick one there was a machine a motor which was being maintained by the maintenance department and the motor had got a cable now that cable is also known as a v belt or a cable which runs between the motor and the pump for example while doing that it was failing almost every fifth day or the sixth day and they were keep they kept on changing it and they called the supplier and asked him that your quality of the belt is poor and all that but slowly when they started observing the data the functioning of the motor they realized that there was a play in the motor and that play was causing more tension on the belt which was causing it to fail now that is so relevant and this is how we've developed a tool and we also developed a tool on the life of the belt so certain times we knew that the life of the belt is one year and not five days or six days and that is where we could predict that it's not the belt but it's something else and the same can be reversed now if you know that the belt life is one year after one year you don't need the belt to fail you can change it using predictive data intelligence under predictive maintenance for example we all go to a car manufacturing or the car service center they check the battery level and if you guys have seen they have the red yellow green tick when you go for the service station and the minute they put a red tick on your battery status it is a predictive information that you have to change your battery and if you don't you will have a breakdown on the road and what do we do we change the battery so this is data intelligence in your car in your service center that you visit every 3 months 6 months so from today onwards i want all of you to observe where all data intelligence is being applied the the fifth one the fourth one is decisive there are certain data which get collected and they help you to take decisions for future for example the sales data now after collecting a sales data in the company the marketing team realized that they are selling to three companies let's say a b c the company a is paying them 100 rupees for the period of 60 days credit company b is paying them 100 rupees for a 30 day credit and company c is paying them 98 rupees for cash payment now if they don't have the correlation between the credit period and the price they would be able to take only single minded decision that they would try to sell somebody who is giving them 100 rupees the minute i convert that data into a story that this is the money that you're getting this is the credit period and this is the interest that you're losing on 30 day 60 day and 90 day credit the decisions would be changed the decisions would be far more better and they might give it to a person or the a customer c who is giving them 98 but who is giving them cash payment 
So that's that's the importance of having a decisive where you have data, you have recommended future decisions, and you take decisions on the data. The last is diagnostic. What happens in diagnostic? Let me not explain it by theory. Give you a practical thing. When you're driving your bike, the fuel indicator is basically a diagnostic thing, or the oil level indicator is a diagnostic thing. It diagnoses what is your oil level, and it tells you or it indicates you that you need to get your thing checked. Sometimes, even in the car, when you start your car and you start getting the beep and the red signals, are all diagnostic. Now, here, if this bottle, if I if I have to talk about this bottle as a data point or diagnostic. If I have this bottle in my bag and I go home and I find my bag to be wet, I know that there is a leakage in this bottle and that's a diagnostic data that I've got, but I cannot immediately change the bottle. I have to check if I have closed the lid properly or not. So which means I'll have to take the diagnostic to a stage two or stage three. So diagnostic is not decisive. It only gives you a diagnosis that this is where you are. This is what you need to do. And then based on your past experience, you take the decision. Beautiful. You know, I think very well explained, Sagar, because, uh, yeah, all, you know, as you rightly said, that all those data points will have an indicator. So it, it is either a descriptive, it is prescriptive, it is indicating you to take some actions. And it is about where and how you want to use that data into, into the journey that you have. And there is a lot of it which is there at a personal level and a lot of it that you can use for uh, for business level. So, and I think one one thing which I'm getting present to Sagar is, is for example, today we look at the entire, uh, you know, the a, a place where data intelligence has evolved like anything is the medical field, right? Today you have fever, a doctor, you know, would just give you a basic treatment two days into the fever and they want you to go and check your urine, uh, get the urine routines done, get your blood report done, get your sonographies done. But what are they trying to do? They're trying to look at different data points, which can give an indicator to what needs to be resolved. And it's it's the data process that they want to do to ensure that they give you the right medication at the end of it. And it's an evolved industry. Absolutely. The data intelligence, uh, you know, while there is a lot of data intelligence, which is there and scoped out by a lot of analytics tool and a lot of companies are doing it right now but as you rightly mentioned the scope is tremendous there is still a lot of it that gets missed out completely on ground by people at individual levels and by people at uh, even in professional levels so you know one of the ways that i have been using data sagar and to let you know in coaching you know, there are sometimes when you're coaching somebody the, one of the one of the belief systems is that you know I'm not good enough or I cannot do this task and a, a lot of times you know and, and this is there in all mindfulness meditation and everywhere where they ask you to start writing three things or five things that that you are capable of or that you you manage to complete in in that day and as a therapy over a 30 40 50 60 days, you actually start observing that there's so much of data of what you've done. And it starts shifting your belief system from what it was of you're not good enough to something that starts telling you that, no, you're good enough. I mean, it's it's just only a way of you looking at it. As simple as that data point. So I'm just getting present to, to what you just mentioned about data intelligence and those common data uh, components of those data intelligence and how they are useful to make business decisions and to personal decisions. So thanks, thanks, Narendra, for responding uh, you know, to, to what we said. So Sagar, I think the last element which I would want to bring out from you is to talk about the uses of data intelligence. So while you know, I could mention about some things on a personal level, on belief system, and, and how we use it on a softer element, but if you can talk a little more with regards to the usage of data intelligence at a business level. Absolutely, Kalpesh. So why data intelligence can be used in every single business strategic decision, the, the main areas where we can have data intelligence will be 
in management review meetings, in decision makings for expansion, decision makings for new product development, decision makings for sales, decision making for orders, uh, decision making even for hiring an individual. So sometimes it's so important that, you know, we try to do an aptitude test, but sometimes it's not the aptitude test that matters. Sometimes it's the integrity test that someone has to take. Sometimes it's the human values that we have to analyze. So data intelligence depends completely on the perspective of the organization, the need of the organization, and what relevant touch points they would like to increase. So as I said, data intelligence can be used in daily operations for continual improvement, daily operations for productivity and increasing the efficiency because we know from the day one session that we are doing, productivity is equal to efficiency into effectiveness. So it's not only the efficiency of working, but it's also the effectiveness. Data intelligence can also be used in operations, which is supply chain, logistics, product making, and the quality of your operations. Data intelligence can also be used in management process in making decisions about expansion, about business development, and also about investment. Because looking into ROI is not the only thing that you have to work around. You also should be intelligent enough and you also should have the data to understand the global scenario. Now, one cannot do an investment right now into BS4 vehicles because the world has moved on to BS6. So not having that data and investing more on producing those engines will be a stupid decision, right? It sounds very simple, Kalpesh, but it's, it's very, very important for a person to understand where they should use data intelligence. Now, to give a simple example, the battery in the phone that we started today's session with, every time we see that battery, we are calculating the information in our mind and we are using the intelligence of our mind to plug it into a power in case if we feel that is right or wrong. The same way, every time we take an order from any customer, if it's a manufacturing unit, you need to evaluate if that product, if that service that you are going to provide is adding value to the customer, but it's also adding value to your bottom line because sometimes to add value to the customer, you're making losses, but some companies take the leap of faith and continue to do a loss for a certain period because they know that the volumes and the brand value that that customer brings in yeah. is far, far superior. So data intelligence is completely perspective based, relevant based, situation based. Same data can become a fertilizer or a pesticide. Now to give a clarification on that Kalpesh, let me give you a simple example. I've used it earlier. I'll use it again. The fertilizer in the plant is useful, but the same fertilizer in your plate is deadly. So the same data can be useful for an organization which is looking for marketing, but that data might not be relevant for a, a company which is into manufacturing or into service industry. So data intelligence is completely situation based, relevant based, company based and perspective based. I hope that answers the question. Beautiful, Sagar. I think you know, that, that's what you rightly mentioned. And I think, you know, even the, to, to the audience, I want to share something that, you know, when we work with a lot of data points, Sagar, in, in our organization, in the current position that we're working at, uh, consulting the organizations is, is we've seen that a lot of times people tend to do a lot of analysis, slicing and dicing of the data in isolation. Yes. And what happens in their isolation? So, for example, one of the data points, you know, you're looking at, say, 1000 data points of your employees and you're looking at your performance indicators, you know, considering that this is the performance appraisal for most of them. And all you're looking at is what is the final score that they have? Okay, who is the rank one? So top 10, 20, you know, creating the bell curve and all of that. But that's a silo data if you have not taken into consideration the other aspects 
which go into making that person a holistic leader in the organization so if your performance is only talking about the attributes of what he did on job that's one thing that's about the output metric but what about his discipline metric what about his behavior metric what about his loyalty metric and if those elements are not taken into consideration your your data is not holistic and hence you may end up causing more damage rather than rewarding the people that you want to reward so hence i think from my side uh, you know i'm just maybe hinting to to the next point that you want to cover or the next topic that you want to talk about so sagar if i may link that to you know requesting you to talk about what is it that the audience can look at for the next session that we're going to come up with absolutely kalpesh so uh, being a professional speaker and i talk about productivity uh, i i'll today take liberty to share a little bit about my life so i started my life journey from slums in mumbai and uh, you know 2005 the floods actually put 8 feet of water in my house where the height of the house is 9 feet now with the data that i have given you you can really imagine the top 1 feet that is left is only the air there's no equipment there's nothing everything in the house is washed off so what was the thing that made me go to london do my studies self funded come back to india get associated with an orphanage with 40 kids was nothing but my own internal self motivation the motivation that i took from the data points the motivation that i got from information the research that i did about the uk universities which made me go and study there because i could earn while i learn of course opportunities were there in india but if i could earn in pounds which converts into 98 or 92 rupees in india it, it's of course a huge impact for me and the family status that i was in and god's grace today living in a villa and you know enjoying a weekend with my mom dad my mom uh, literally used to have a fear or a phobia when it used to rain and now she is living a wonderful life that motivates me so all this if i say it in a plain terms without giving you the dates without giving you the numbers or without giving you the the numerical or the quantitative information makes no sense so motivation is very important to ensure productivity mindset now i used to motivate myself by giving small gifts to myself whenever i used to get a tip from a customer because i was a waiter bartender litter picker i mean i've done all the odd jobs under the sun including picking up cigarette butts so i used to pick up 2500 cigarette butts in the night while the youngsters in london used to you know smoke the fag out i used to go out and pick up those studs and the cigarette butts and you know every bud used to get me money now that motivated me every day is because every day morning when i submitted those buds i used to get money and the money counted motivated me the the education that i was getting motivated me the small chocolate bar which i could take based on the tip from the customers while doing a waiter job motivated me it's the same way to have productivity mindset at an individual level to have a productivity mindset even at an organization level you need motivation now that we have talked for nine sessions where uh, you know if i may just take a minute and uh, recall right from standardization five ways creating accountability uh, telling about quality uh, talking about first time right and bringing that thing into their dna about using mistake proofing after all that is done and if the employees are doing it every single day and pumping in their energy they also need motivation sometimes they also need that push sometimes they also need appreciation sometimes so now we have come to a session where we have done all the churning in the organization right from you know standardizing setting up systems setting up uh, equipment setting up diagnostic tools first time right okay okay is implemented kaizen is implemented now to ensure that that is continued we need regular pumping the vehicle needs refueling in the same way we need reenergizing we need motivation so the next session that is coming up is about motivation as a technique what kind of motivation what are the ways of motivation that you can use in your organization to ensure 
the energy of your team is supercharged if you are excited and if you want your friends to know about it tell them to join us in the next session you can watch the repeat telecast of this session on my youtube channel which is sagar amlani you can go and find out that link last but not the least kalpesh i would really like to thank you for being with me for 9 weeks and you know supporting me and uh, you know you, you you've just been a fantastic support throughout because uh, taking the chats talking to the chats asking relevant questions because it's only the powerful questions that you ask me that i'm able to give out the best without powerful questions my knowledge is only within me so thank you for asking me such relevant powerful questions and thank you red bricks for giving us such a safe environment for conducting our linkedin live sessions guys if you are in mumbai pune or hyderabad i strongly recommend you to go and visit red bricks check out their safety standards they're just amazing way of managing things at data they capture your temperatures at the gate initially inside uh, sanitization is everywhere brilliant setup kudos to red bricks and thank you very much for being a part of us as a venu partner shruti you've made my evening i'm just going to have a blast today thank you for that comment and that's really energizing thank you very much great so i'll probably just say on a closing comment is uh, stay motivated <laughs> stay connected stay healthy and uh, let's come back and talk about how motivation uh, you know works wonders in regards to building productivity mindset so thank you thank you narendra stuti shruti anil goswami mohit vidula thank you everyone for being with us thank you shakil uh, and and see you again next thursday at 5 pm thank you sagar thank and you, thank Pabesh. you for uh, for the acknowledgement i i completely get that thank you for partnering this thank you bye bye bye